Good afternoon. Um, all right, we're all switched in. I'm not kidding when we're talking about lightning talks. Even the switch out feels like a, a pit stop. Um, all right, so I'm going to talk about um, full site editing, FSE is what we, um, in, we, we've been calling it lately, and FTW for the win. I think um, full site editing is pretty awesome. And um, yeah, my name is Evan Mullins, like I said. Um, I work uh, with Bluehost, we're one of the sponsors. So if you have questions or anything afterwards, come find me at the booth, and I'll be happy to, to, to chat through anything with you. Um, and we'll be talking about, yeah, full site editing for the win, but for personal sites. Um, and I believe, um, well, personal branding and everything can, can go a lot better once we have, now that we have full site editing, it makes um, editing our sites a lot easier and a lot faster and even more secure. Um, so we'll talk about why you should have a personal site um, and a few things to consider and some helpful blocks for, for, for some inspiration. Um, it's a little bit meta, but all these slides and the content and examples are on my own personal site. Um, pushing you guys to my personal site and to talk about personal sites. Um, but you can go to evanmullins.com and there's a, um, there should be some big buttons right up front that will take you to the slide notes and some examples as well so you can follow along. <coughs> Okay, so the, the case for a personal website. I believe that everyone should have their own personal website, whether you own, own a company and do WordPress for a living, or whether you write content or, or whatever. I think everyone could benefit from having their own personal website. Um, so, quick show of hands. Um, do you guys, anyone in here, have their own personal website already? It's a pretty good showing, I'd say roughly half. Um, hands up again, is your site a WordPress site as a personal site? I would hope most, most of them are. Is it, is it updated? Is it the latest version of WordPress, 602, which came out a week maybe ago, maybe two, I can't remember. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of work once you have a site to then keep it updated, keep it current. Um, sometimes it can get overwhelming. Um, there is a, um, the uh, cobbler's children have no shoes saying where, um, like people that make websites for a living a lot of times don't have their own website or don't keep it updated because it's just one of those things that gets, it gets left behind. Um, let's see. All right, so there are many, many reasons and uses for a personal website. Uh, I think things like personal branding for owning your own online identity. Um, you don't want some random Facebook post from seven years ago to be your online identity, or if you ever get mentioned somewhere for something that you may have done or may not have done. Um, if you have your own website, that's usually gonna be the thing that comes up whenever anyone looks for you. Um, and it's another, a nice place where you can share your own thoughts. Blogging, I think, is still alive and well, even if there is Twitter and Facebook and Instagram out there too. Like, we, um, we have uh, almost a, I want to say duty to like own our own content and put our own content on our own platform rather than just giving it all to the social media. Um, which brings me to, yeah, social media links. We all probably have some form, of, some form of social media that it's nice. On your own site, you can link people to that so that they can get connected with you. Um, you can put your resume on your own personal website. Um, it can actually lead to getting a job and making websites. Um, you can put a portfolio and testimonials, all kinds of things you can put on your own website. And down at the bottom, all the cool kids are doing it, so you might as well, right? <clears throat> um, yeah, there's a whole spectrum of use cases for a, your own personal site. And that's because we're all unique individuals and we can all have our own unique individual website too. Um, so things to consider when you're making or updating your personal site. Try to think about your purpose of your site, the, um, the why you want to have a site. Do you want to have it primarily to share links or to write posts or even poetry? You can write recipes. I mean, you can make it your own, but make it something that you are interested in. You can put code or images on there. You can even sell things on your own personal site if that's what, um, that's, if that's what drives you. Um, another thing to consider is your domain name. Where is it going to live? 
a lot of people tend to use their name. You know, my, my site is evanmullins.com. You can have, I think the last speaker was a, his name.com as well. That's a pretty standard move if your name is not already taken. But in the world, there's probably another person that's named exactly like you. Um, you can get creative. You can use different top level domains. You can dot blog, dot me. Um, you can even get really creative with like a vanity URL if your name lines up with it somehow. Um, I've seen lots of interesting ways to do it. Um, and then also, yeah, remove the barriers to keeping it current. Go ahead and enable auto updates on your site. Let WordPress keep itself updated so it's secure and, and you get the latest, the latest thing. Um, so yeah, find your focus and start there. You can start really small and iterate and build upon it. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to jump into some helpful block examples I've found that um, kind of tailoring uh, blocks to like a personal website. Um, and I think using blocks really gets us to a more, a more aesthetic site a lot faster than even just a couple years ago. <clears throat> okay, so um, this is a list, but we're going to go through some of these on their own unique slides. There's plenty of blocks out there to go, um, and even in patterns you can just insert into your site on your personal site to make it really up and running pretty quickly. Um, you can use some custom blocks that fill the gaps between the core blocks and some plugins, or you can develop your own plugin. Um, let's see. So, and I've kind of just created an example of what I would put on my site, and I've actually got a lot of these on my site now just for the example value. But I thought like um, websites, a personal website is just like a, your own business card, really. So you could just have a business card on your site that basically is your name, your title, a quick little bio. You can even have a picture of yourself. Um, you can have social media links on there. Um, there are lots of ways to, to go about it. Um, so that's a, a block pattern you can use. We've got even just a core cover block. You can throw that on your site. You can add a headline, a button, or just some text. It's a nice way to welcome someone to your site. Um, it's pretty aesthetic. Um, you can find a much better photo, I'm sure, to put on your own website. Um, you don't, yeah, you can, you can make it your own. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard of link trees. Um, if you're on social media, a lot of people, you can't put links on posts, so they link, they put the little like link in bio, um, and they link off to a, a website called Linktree that is just a collection of links. Um, you could make that for yourself on your own website rather than, again, giving your content to some other third party site. Um, so this one is a, a block pattern that I've actually submitted to the pattern directory. You can just, uh, I think, search Linktree. Um, and you can just grab this and drop it on your own site. You would be done in a matter of minutes. I guess you would, you would want to add the actual URLs um, for your links. But yeah, this one would be a really quick one to jump onto. <coughs> mm, I think that went backwards. All right. Um, yeah, another core block you could use is the social link block. This one's pretty easy to just yeah add your social links or other links into. Um, and they link off to other sites. Um, and then when you link off to another site, a lot of the, the, um, the icons and images are built in to the, to the core block. But if you have a different site with a different image you want to include in there, you can add like a custom class and a little custom CSS style. And I like to use like a favicon icon for that site or something. Um, but they're really easy to, to throw these onto a site, and especially I think it makes it lends itself well to a personal website. Um, I mentioned earlier resumes. Um, I made a quick little uh, job block. If you wanted to create a resume and put all your job history on your site um, in case you're looking for a new a new position, you can list out your previous previous positions. Um, and this is a it's not a full-on custom block. It's just a variation of a columns block. So it's just written with um, a little bit of JavaScript. You can create one of these. And it comes up as its own block in the um, inserter. But it just drops in a column block that's kind of pre-populated with some, some preset values. And you just fill in the blanks, basically. Um, and then we have um, a skills block. I know I think Jetpack has like a, a ratings block that gives you like five stars you can just click on. Um, this one kind of more tailored to a resume if you want to list out like your, 
your skills um, and how like rate yourself how how well you are with those. This is just a quick little block that I put together to just to kind of get the idea get get some ideas for for like what blocks you might want to use on a resume on your site. <clears throat> I keep pushing the wrong button, going backwards. All right. Um, Another one that uh, may be helpful for you if you enjoy speaking or teaching at conferences or meetups, you can list them on your site as little talks or meetups. Um, I made this little custom block, just experimenting with blocks, but you can add a label and a title and links to the slides and video for your talk. And you can upload an image to place on your little uh, the image circle there. Because um, earlier I was just on my own site, I would list out where I was going to be speaking, and it got complicated trying to like always keep the formatting consistent, and ended up just wanting to create a simple interface to, to do it all. Um, but something like that could be easy to use on, on any site. Um, and also, I hope you guys can look around and get inspired at other, what other people are doing. Uh, I have went around looking through um, I don't know if you can read those, but these slides are online. Just kind of linked a whole bunch of personal sites of people in the WordPress space, um, people that are contributors, people that have plugins, things like that, um, voices in the community. Um, so it's a good idea to go in and look at what people are doing. You can get other ideas and get inspired um, by what they are doing. <clears throat> and I think that's all I've got right now. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to talk afterwards, or um, yeah, come find me if you want to talk. And again, all the slides are online. You can get to them at evanmullins.com. Um, and I have a built a whole uh, block theme that kind of puts all this together. Uh, and it's on GitHub, and there's a link on my site as well. So you can find it all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.